welcome to Iowa New Paltz. I'm Rosal Bacareo. And I'm Katie Bompincero. Here are today's top stories. In international news, on the night of April 14, 2014, hundreds of schoolgirls at the Chibok boarding school in northeastern Nigeria awoke to the sound of gunfire. More than 270 of the schoolgirls found themselves in the clutches of the Islamist militant group Boko Haram. Their abduction sparked global outrage and a huge campaign calling for their rescue, partly inspired by the hashtag, hashtag bring back our girls. On Tuesday, President-elect Muhammadu Buhari stated, quote, We do not know if the girls, the Chibok girls, can be rescued. Their whereabouts remain unknown. Tuesday marks one year since the girls were kidnapped. Since then, no one has been rescued. The Nigerian government has not made a continuous effort to save the young girls' lives, and Boko Haram continues to create mishap in the country. In national news. Former New England Patriots star Aaron Hernandez will need to keep his lawyers even after being convicted of murder and other charges in the death of semi-pro football player Odin Lloyd. The 25-year-old potentially faces three more trials, one criminal and two civil actions. Next up is a murder trial in which he's accused of killing two men and wounding another person near Boston nightclub in July 2012. Prosecutors have said Hernandez fatally shot Daniel De Abreu and Safira Furtado when he fired into their car. Another passenger was wounded and two others were injured, were uninjured. Hernandez pleaded not guilty at his arraignment. Hillary Clinton announced on Sunday that she would seek the presidency for a second time, immediately establishing herself as the likely 2016 Democratic nominee. The announcement effect effectively began what could be one of the least contested races for the Democratic presidential nomination in recent history. It could also be the first time a woman captures a major party's nomination. Mrs. Clinton's declaration on Sunday is to be followed by a series of intimate but critical campaign events in Iowa and New Hampshire. She will use them to reintroduce herself to voters and begin to lay out the central theme of her candidacy, improving the economic fortunes of the middle class with an emphasis on increasing wages and reducing income inequality. Stay tuned for local news. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. In local news, last year the Village Board of New Paltz voted unanimously to require businesses to stop providing plastic checkout bags to customers. The law went into effect at the beginning of this month, and since then, SUNY New Paltz students have seen a number of changes around campus. New Paltz appears to be the first community in Ulster, Sullivan, and Orange counties to enact a plastic bag ban. We spoke with students to get their opinion on the ban. I don't like it at all. I understand that, you know, they're trying to cut back and save, but um, in terms of, um, you know, I'm a student, I love to eat in bundles, so I would love to have something other than my book bag to carry it in, you know. I didn't think they would actually charge us for um, you know paper bags but um, I mean 50 cent is reasonable you know could have been worse. Plastic bags kind of are bad for the environment but at the same time I reuse mine all the time for garbage like I don't find them that bad and they're a lot cheaper. I mean personally I don't agree with it but just playing devil's advocate I think it uh, really helps the environment. Here's the Student Union, I'm Katie Bompincero, back to you. On Tuesday the New Paltz Student Association sent out an email announcing the Spring Fest 2015 lineup. The concert will be held on April 25th in Elting Gym. The headliners are Action Bronson and Best Coast. Tickets went on sale the following day to the public. It has been announced that comedians Chris Gethard and Matt Koff will be performing stand-up on May 2nd in College Terrace. Chris Gethard is most known for his roles in movies like The Other Guys, The Heat, and television shows such as The Office, Parks and Rec, and Broad City. Matt Koff currently writes for The Daily Show and is a New Paltz alumnus. Doors open at 7.45 and tickets will be sold at the door, $5 for students and $10 for the general public. Stay tuned for Brett Linehan with your entertainment news. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. 
Variety reports that Netflix has already renewed its hit drama Orange is the New Black for a fourth season. The show, set in a fictional women's prison in Litchfield, New York, has been one of the streaming service's top performing original series, not to mention a massive critical hit. The series has garnered more than 20 awards, including three Emmys and two GLAAD Media Awards, and is the recipient of a Peabody Award and a Television Critics Association Award. Netflix has renewed the show earlier and earlier with each passing year, this time granting another round of episodes to the show almost two months before season three premieres on June 12th. Lionsgate, Joss Whedon, and Whedon's production company are all defendants in a copyright lawsuit tied to their 2012 horror movie, The Cabin in the Woods. Self-publishing author Peter Joseph Gallagher claims in his complaint that Whedon's script is eerily similar to his 2006 novel, The Little White Trip, A Night in the Pines. Gallagher is seeking $10 million in damages. Like the book, the film tells the story of five friends, three males and two females, who take a trip to a remote cabin in the woods. The complaint goes on to list nearly 30 of the movie's scenes, including bits of dialogue, plot details, and character traits that are allegedly identical to Gallagher's. No word from Whedon yet, but Gallagher and his team have made it clear they want remuneration as well as a jury trial. Here's Adriana Ortiz with the Celebrity Sizzle. On Sunday at Coachella, superstar pop diva Madonna shocked the crowd by pulling rap star Drake in for a long, unexpected kiss. Mwah. The 56-year-old mother of four continues to show she has no boundaries on stage and won't stop bringing the sexy. Madonna has famously kissed Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera in the past. The internet is buzzing with gossip and rumors wondering, could this be Drake's initiation into the Illuminati? Speaking of the Illuminati, on Monday, Northwest, daughter of reality star Kim Kardashian and Grammy Award-winning rapper Kanye West, was baptized in Israel after a family trip to Armenia. The celebrity Tot was baptized in St. James Cathedral in the Armenian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. Just another way that baby Northwest life is more fabulous than ours will ever be. Here are some yaks of the week. The first one reads, Oscars is more lit than Oasis. The second yak says, can we transfer some of our print quota to our meal plan or... If you have a yak that is funny or cool, tweet a screenshot to at Adrienne Rebecca and it can make it into our next week's episode. Stay tuned for Naya Bonilla with your sports news. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? The New Paltz baseball team surrendered a three-run lead after the seventh inning to visiting Union College on Tuesday night, falling to the Dutchman 9-7 at Cantine Park. With the defeat, the Hawks dropped to 4-16 overall and will host SUNY Oneonta tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in a State University of New York Athletic Conference contest. The New Paltz women's lacrosse team rallied from a 4-0 deficit to start the game and tied the score three different times but the Hawks were defeated by Vassar College in a 12-8 loss to the Brewers in a non-conference game Tuesday at the Old Turf Field. Senior defender Julia Johnson tied the score twice in the second half. Vassar, however, scored four times later in the game to escape with a 12-8 victory. New Paltz drops to 2-8 overall with the loss and looks to get back in the win column on Thursday, April 16th against non-conference Mount St. Mary College. That's all for this week's news. Thank you for joining us and tune in next week for your latest news.